the fourth principle it's surrender some of you may struggle with this notion that I'm going to talk about now but your life becomes a lot more tense and uh, kind of unmanageable if you try to control everything yourself if you want to leave absolutely nothing to the universe and you want to think through everything yourself then good luck <laughs> really I, I don't if you look around some of the most unhappy people are the ones who are constantly delving into the detail of every little thing even when it's not required you know I've got to buy a bottle of milk organic or non-organic you know low fat or that's about it you know what do I care which cow they milked to, to get this bottle or where it was fed you know there are all, all sorts of information you know there is we have uh, a God incarnation in the form of Google but but it's also it's also <laughs> very pointless I mean people dive into this ocean of internet and just you know swimming all day and then they get tired they'll close the laptop and then they'll do something else what a senseless way of life of living so we have this tendency to just keep ourselves engrossed for absolutely no sane reason and that's what robs you of your insanity so then surrender becomes hard when you think I'm gonna control my tomorrow I'm gonna control my next month and next year and my next lifetime then you have you are putting on yourself a great burden at the best you can do your karma which you have to do anyway that I'm doing what's right and live in the moment leave some things to the divine leave some things to the nature you know you don't have to remind yourself to breathe it's there imagine if you did that that I have to take control of my breath you will go to bed and you will perhaps forget to breathe you will fall asleep and you won't wake up so surrender is that not just saying that that I'm assuming everybody here believes in God uh, surrender is not just saying God you know everything belongs to you nothing is mine um, because that is just for the saying nobody really feels that way surrender is I am happy however you are keeping me allow me to be grateful that I exist that I'm able to think able to walk able to eat able to pray able to help somebody I'm happy with that I don't need anything more there's a story in uh, Ramayana so Rama Lord Ram and Lakshman were going in the woods and Sita was already abducted by Ravan and they see a pond and Lakshman says we should take a, a bath here and uh, just you know chill out basically and and Lord Rama takes off his bow and plonks it on the ground the soft ground so it stands you know on the ground and they bathe and stuff and 20 minutes later they come out you know and he wipes and stuff is and then he takes his bow out of the ground and just where the bow was there was a little frog that was hurt and bloodied and Rama's Rama was shattered that I hurt somebody a living creature so he lifted the frog in his hands and said look I'm really sorry I didn't mean to hurt you I didn't mean to cause you this injury but I have I'm really sorry and uh, I don't know what you can do or what I can do to fix it and the frog said well nothing can fix it now Lord because everybody prays to you when they're in trouble when they are in pain but if you are the one who's caused the pain then who can I pray to <laughs> right <laughs> I have nobody left so uh, it's okay but I tell you what Rama there's only one thing sweeter than dying by your hands I'm actually happy 
that I have to die one day anyway, I'm happy that I'm dying by your hands. And there's only one thing that's sweeter than dying by your hands. There's only one thing I would desire more than to die by your hands. And that is to die in your hands. What could be more divine than this? And I would like to say, you know, end like this, this little anecdote with a question. What are you really clinging on to? What? What is that that you are really clinging on to? Perhaps everything, but does it even have any meaning in the big scheme of things? The only way to retain anything, the only way to grow anything, it's to pass it on. Anything that you are willing to part with, that thing will grow in your life. You will get more and more of that. When you part with negative emotions, when you part with angers, you express it, right? I have anger in me, I've given it to somebody else, I have now passed it on. And what happens? That anger will grow in me. Anything that I pass on will grow. If I have a seed and I keep that to myself, one day it will just it'll, you know, meet its fate. It'll destroy. It'll be destroyed. But if I pass on that seed to the ground, if I sow it in the ground, that seed one day will sprout. The only way to keep anything good or bad is to give it to others. The more you give it, the more it will grow. And surrender is giving back to the universe. That I'm just happy to be here. You know, things could have been much worse. Um, once I wasn't planning, but I'm got, I got reminded of this um, story once again from a blog. There was a man, he was always positive. No matter what anybody said to him, what happened in his life, he would smilingly say, well, it could have been much worse. And this, this really got on the nerves of his friends because somebody who's really positive can sometimes really put people off, those who are not. You know, they, they can't understand why this person's always smiling. Why, how, what's, not just out of jealousy, out of sheer frustration. That how come this guy's always happy? You know, something's wrong with him. It can't be right. So this man was always positive and uh, one day his friends, um, you know, thought something's wrong with this guy. Maybe, uh, maybe we should tell him a situation which is so terrible, so severe that he will have to say, well, that's really bad. And so he tells his friend, uh, this positive person, he says, well, you know what, last night I had a terrible, terrible nightmare. He said, what do you mean, what happened? He said, well, I, I, I saw that I met an accident and I died and I was dragged all the way to hell and I was in extreme pain and there they flayed me and I was crying in excruciating pain. And the man said, ah, don't worry, it could have been much worse. He said, what do you mean it could have been much worse? I died in my dream and this is what happened to me afterwards. How could it? possibly have been any worse and the man said it could have been true <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you should be happy that it's not true it's good enough I think <laughs> had it been true it would have been much worse really how many of our fears actually ever come true chances are less than one percent less than one percent of fears ever come true and that too it's a very generous figure. I think 0.001% of the fears ever come true. Whenever you experience fear, you need to remind yourself, what am I afraid of? What's the worst that can happen? And suddenly your mind will shift. And there is that, you know, you've created me. If you are my creator, then I don't have to worry. A child plays in the lap of a mother, an infant, he or she is not worried. 
It knows I'm in my mother's lap. So look at our own existence and the best way to look at the bigness is either look at a sky full of stars or go in front of an ocean and just see how grand everything is. In the grand scheme of things, where do we actually stand? What is the worry? It is not practical to always have summer. Sometimes you will have to see the winter. Sometimes you'll have to see the fall. Sometimes you'll have to see the clouds. Sometimes you'll get the blue sky. Sometimes it will rain. Sometimes it will be hailstorms. Sometimes maybe windstorms. But these are all the various colors of life. In each of these colors, it's up to you whether you want to go out and have a good time or sit in and be afraid and keep planning and keep planning and keep planning. It's a matter of personal choice. Basically, your happiness is in your hands. Nobody can give it to you. People may make you feel good for a little while. People can give you pleasures. People can help you feel happy for a short while. But ultimately, if you choose to be not happy, nobody can make you happy. And if you choose to be happy, nobody can do anything to you otherwise. So gratitude, compassion, and being happy as a matter of commitment and surrender, really, they're the only four things.